Hi YouTube. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about solar power. The fact that the property we purchased is about 10 miles away from the closest hydro pole didn't really matter to us. Our intent all along was to build a solar system. Uh, I should probably start out by saying I am not a subject matter expert. You should probably do your own research like I did, but I did spend a good six months researching. Uh, I talked to a lot of vendors uh, through email as well as calling them on the phone. My plan all along was to build our solar system at home and then make sure it was functional before moving it to the off-grid property. In this video, I'm going to review the products that I purchased. Uh, I'm gonna tell you how much it costs and I'm gonna go through the step-by-step -step on how I put the solar system together. Thanks for watching. So the electrical panels arrive packaged like this. It's really good. Uh, each one comes individually packaged. Uh, when you open this up, it has a piece of styrofoam in each corner. Mine arrived in great shape. Uh, the boxes obviously get a little beat up in transit, but none of the glass was broken and all eight of my panels were in great condition when they arrived. Once you have unpacked your panels, they look a little something like this. Now important to note, there are a few different panels you can choose from, uh, different weights, different dimensions, things like that. I just chose the cheapest one because I figured it didn't really matter for my application. The mounting hardware comes in a separate box and you can see here you get four brackets and you get some stainless steel uh, bolts, nuts and washers to mount the bracket to the solar panel as well as some really good screws to uh, mount it to whatever medium you're mounting to. The mounting brackets go on very easily uh, and it's really cool. They actually have offset uh, mounting positions. So if you're gonna run the panels right beside each other like I do, you can either position the bracket here or position it down here. In this case, I'm gonna position it here. It's very easy. There's a bolt with a flat washer on the back of it that goes on. And then on the front side, you have a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. Super easy. Uh, all the stuff is 10 mil hardware. So unless you're like me and seem to have lost everything that is 10 mil, I just happen to be able to find a couple 10 mil parts here. <laughs> and then just snug that up. And your panels will look something like this once all the mounting hardware has been attached. So Renergy has all kinds of solutions for how to mount your panels uh, to get them positioned properly to face the sun. Uh, Multi-panel solutions, single panel solutions, uh, all a little bit too expensive for my blood, so I decided to make my own. I just used some pressure treated two by two by eight foots. Uh, you can see I've built a frame here that is 46 inches by 84 inches. Uh, the panels will fit perfectly onto this. Very important that you position the cables on the panels all to the inside. Uh, that way they're easier to make a connection. And the finished product looks a little something like that. Really love how you can offset the center mounting brackets on this to have your panels line up perfectly. I'm obviously going to need to rig up a mounting system for the stakes that are coming out of the ground, but I'll do that once we arrive at the property. So the panels look a little something like this from the backside. Very important that when you're uh, mounting these, you have the orientation of the connectors all to the center. It makes it very easy to make your final connections. So in addition to purchasing the 800 watt system, I also purchased these 400 one connectors so I could connect all my panels in parallel. Very easy to do. Basically just plug and play. Only really connects one way and they just snap in like that. So if you snap all four of them in, then leaves you with one connector to run back to your solar charge controller. Next, you'll need another 4 to one connector to make the same connectors with the negative side of the panels. And again, it's very easy, just snaps in. And leaves you with two very easy wires to run back to your solar system, one positive, one negative. Obviously, when I connect this up at the off-grid property, I'll clean these wires up, I'll tie wrap them off to something just to make them nice and neat and tidy. 
Also important to note that part of the Renergy kit that I bought included this fuse, which runs on the positive line from the panels back to the solar charge controller. This guy right here is the heart of the solar system. It is a 12 volt, 200 amp hour, lithium ion phosphate battery manufactured right here in Canada by a company called Canbat. Now this type of battery is more expensive than a standard lead acid battery, but it also has the ability to just charge all the way down to 0% without being damaged, whereas lead acid batteries can only just charge to around 50%. Uh, if you discharge them past that, they will get damaged. This battery is a little bit more expensive for two reasons. One, lithium ion batteries are generally more expensive than lead acid because they last a lot longer and you don't need as many of them in your system. And two, this particular battery is designed with a heating system on it so it can discharge and charge down to minus 20 degrees Celsius, whereas most batteries will be damaged if you try to charge or discharge them under about the freezing mark. Uh, Canbat does have a battery uh, that does not have that feature and in that, that case it is a little bit cheaper. This unit cost me $2,400. It is the most expensive component of my system. I ordered it online and received it about a week later. Uh, no issues with CanBat. I called them, I spoke with them on the phone about what battery I should pick. Just a great company to deal with. My experience with them was very, very positive. Very happy to buy Canadian product as well. So I purchased the 800 watt solar kit from Renergy. It was the premium kit. As you can see from the website, the kit sells for just under $1,800 and includes a lot of great parts. I think this is a really good deal. In that kit, you got your 60 amp MMPT charge controller, along with your 800 watts of solar panels, uh, along with some of the mounting and connecting hardware that puts everything together. A lot of the wiring came with it. I did, however, need to purchase a few odds and ends, some various connectors and whatnot to uh, connect everything up together. I read a lot of negative reviews of Renergy online, but my experience with them was very positive. Uh, I ordered my system online and had it mostly delivered within a couple of days. Uh, I was missing one of my packages, uh, but when I reached out to them, I had a response immediately and the package arrived shortly thereafter. In addition to the solar kit, I also purchased a 2000 watt Renergy Pure Sine Wave Inverter. This is the mechanism that takes your DC energy and makes it AC. So you can power certain things at the cabin. I'm gonna run most of the lighting uh, on 12 volt DC, but this will be great if we wanna bring a television or a coffee maker or something along those lines. This is probably bigger than I need, but again, my goal was to build the system a little bit oversized so I'd have room for expansion later on. So the Rover charge controller is super easy to use. It has two screws that hold on the bottom panel. Once you remove those screws, the panel can easily be removed. Once you have that panel removed, the connection points are clearly marked. On the left-hand side, you have your PV plus and minus. That would be the photovoltaic or the leads coming in from your solar panels. And then to the right of that, you have both your battery leads and a load lead. Generally speaking, uh, no one seems to be using those load uh, leads coming out of the unit. I'll talk a little bit about that later. So the first few items you wanna connect to your solar charge controller would be your temperature probe, the great thing about this unit is everything is plug and play, so it basically connects in. So after connecting that temperature probe, you basically put the other end of the probe on the battery. This will help the system know the temperature of the battery and in turn the rate at which to charge it. The next item connect would be your Bluetooth. This allows you to have a Bluetooth connection to the charge controller unit and will allow you to monitor uh, from an application on your phone. Again, just connects that way and then you have a relay that your phone will pick up on. Next, I connect the battery negative lead to the solar charge controller. And that will look a bit like this. Wire comes back. You can see it circles around and then just goes to the negative lead on the battery. Again, uh, I'm just gonna pan out here, guys. Obviously, you don't want wires all over everywhere, but because this is just a temporary installation, I'm gonna leave them longer. When I go to set this up at the cabin, I will actually be cutting the wires to proper lengths and putting new connectors on them. Uh, because this is just a trial run, I decided not to put any uh, extra time or effort into it at this point. So the positive connection from the battery runs to a fuse that comes as part of the kit. And then again, we'll just tie in to the battery positive terminal on the charge controller. 
as soon as you plug that battery in, the display screen comes on. You can see right now on the left, that is the solar panels. Because I have no panels connected, it is telling me it is nighttime and there is no photovoltaic energy coming in. You can see my battery is right now at 76% and running at 12.7 volts. There's quite a few cool features to this. You can scroll through, set battery type, uh, there's all kinds of history screens and whatnot. Also a little bit farther up, it has trouble lights on it. All in all, this system has worked well. This is the second time I've hooked it up. I hooked it up once when I first got it, just to make sure all my components worked. So the next thing you would connect at this point would be your solar panels. Very easy, uh, very similar to connecting the batteries. It's basically just one set screw that connects them in. We've already connected up our solar panels at the other end. So we just need to connect them up here now. So with the uh, addition of the wires from the solar panels on the extreme left-hand side, you can now see on the left-hand side of the screen up here, we are charging at 92 watts, 19.9 volts, and my battery is at 85%. Uh, this is, of course, only using four of the eight panels, and it's not that sunny here today. I've seen this charge into the high 100s. Uh, it really loads this battery up relatively quickly. The last component left to install is the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is the mechanism that takes the DC energy and makes it AC energy. At this end, you have a positive and negative that connect to the positive and negative on the battery terminals. And on this end, we have three 120 volt AC outlets as well as an on off switch. This inverter also has a secondary wire that can be run off of it to an on off switch. The idea behind it is, is that if you're not using AC power, you probably want to have your inverter shut off so that you're not drawing that little bit of power that the inverters draw. They have fans in them and things like that, so they'll constantly be drawing the DC power. Before making any connections downstream of the charge controller, you always want to make sure you do not have the panels uh, plugged in. In this case, I've just disconnected the negative terminal just to make sure that there's no power coming in. Now you will always get a bit of a spark when you connect the negative of the inverter to the negative of the battery. This is completely normal. My understanding is that the inverters have some capacitors in them so they hold a little bit of charge, which just charges when you touch it. What I like to do is spark it and then make the connection. And I jumped. I also purchased a 12 volt fuse block on Amazon. Uh, this will connect to the positive and negative leads on the battery and run all the 12 volt uh, lighting and whatnot in the cabin. As you can see, I was able to purchase my uh, solar system for less than $5,000. Uh, I think this is a really good deal. It will be free power. And that's how I put together the solar system. Uh, for me, I think it's gonna be perfect for the application that we need. If there's an increased requirement for power over time as we build things around the property, I can always add another battery to the system. Uh, my intent all along was to oversize the system a little bit. Uh, and have capability to expand down the road. If you have any questions about building your own solar system or the products I bought, please feel free to leave me a comment or you can email me truenorthoffgrid at gmail.com. Anyway guys, that's gonna be it for today. If you like the video, please smash that like button and subscribe. I'm trying to get the subscriber count up a little bit. I will do some more videos on solar once we get the system to the property and once we start putting the wiring in for the cabin. I'm super excited about all this kind of stuff as I'm sure you guys can tell. Thanks for watching guys, have a good day.